So through this comparative analysis, it is revealed that from the 23 higher ed education institution in Canada that we examined, only eight explicitly extend their academic freedom policy to students, while the rest limit academic freedom for faculty members. As a comparison, we can see here on the top right of the slide, uh, two universities in Western Canada. We have observed that the University of British Columbia has the most extensive inclusion of academic freedom, explicitly stating their policy will apply in quotation, not only to the regular members of the university, but to all who are invited to participate in its forum. In contrast, uh, Simon Fraser University states their academic freedom policy in their collective agreement. Um, and every clause in that agreement is directed to in quotation academic staff. Now, the consequences of this is the way in which denying students adequate protection implicitly undermines a student's ability to generate work that is significant enough to be notable or revolutionary in academia. Hence, the exclusion of students from academic freedom policies is harmful in fostering their potential since they are confronted with larger barriers in their academic pursuits. Lastly, an important thing to note is that there exists a gray area in which individuals might not fit perfectly within the category of student or faculty member. Um, for example, I have included here the example of an, an undergraduate teacher's assistant, which has an obligation to teach and they get paid for it, and yet, and yet they still qualify fully as a student. So then we are left wondering how much is an undergrad TA covered um, or protected for their academic freedom. Um, and next to discuss what is included, I will pass it to Nicole. Thank you. So moving on to, as Alir mentioned, is what exactly is included. So establishing which actors are explicitly recognized in academic, um, in academic freedom policies uh, becomes a question of what particular actions are preserved under said policies. So according to the 1997 UNESCO Statement of Academic Freedom, the scope of acknowledge and protection action can be broken down into four basic pillars. So you have the pillar of carrying out research, disseminating and publishing results, expressing opinion about the institution and participating in representative bodies. So most of these actions, are, sorry, all of these actions are highlighted within most of the universities that we have explored. However, if we can move on to the next slide, please. So as I mentioned, most of these pillars have been mentioned within most of the universities. However, we recognize as students that this tends to be a reactionary, a reactionary response that leaves room for vulnerability. So employing a universal definition of academic freedom to address the various institutional aspects has the potential to close this gap. The CAUT incorporates the UNESCO definition of academic freedom, but also advances the definition into narrower areas of university life. So as you can see, it includes areas such as artistic expression, respectful workplace policies, and the assignment of student grades. These particular areas we do not see mentioned within other university policies, ultimately leaving it a vulnerable gap. 